Hi besties. I've tried many different forms of therapies over the years, but I definitely say that retail therapy is my favorite. There's nothing better to fill the void in my heart than books and coffee. So I thought it was about time to go book shopping together again. Today we're going to hit up the Green Valley Book Fair and then in a couple of days I'm heading to my parents' house for spring break, which means I think we need to go to Second and Charles as well since that's the only time I can go to one. So great excuse. I don't really have any books I'm looking for today. I mean, you never really know where you're going to find at Green Valley, but I thought we could browse around, see what catches our eye. I'm excited. Let's get going. This is a, if you know, you know, reference to a previous video of mine. And if you don't know, go watch my recent video where I recommend books based off of your childhood favorites. Bad Kitty might be one of them. You make me wanna be with somebody Doing things that Okay, I'm out from Green Valley. Can't wait to show you all what I picked up. But first, I'll see you guys in a few days, more like a few seconds for you at Second and Charles.
Okay, just got back from Second and Charles. It was lovely as always. Time for the book haul portion of this video. I stacked all the books here behind me. I'm going to try to not spend too much time on each book because you know, I may have bought a few too many books. Is there such a thing? I actually don't think so. So never mind. Let's start with what I got from the Green Valley Book Fair. Hi, it's me, Sarah. I'm jumping in from the end of the video because I forgot to mention that if you see this on my hand, I burned myself. That's why there's this circle on my hand. Um, just please ignore that. I don't even know what it looks like. I do know what it looks like. It looks like a wart. <laughs> It looks like a wart. I burned myself, so. Back to production. For the past eight or so months, whenever I've gone to the Green Valley Book Fair, they've always had a lot of Ellen Hildebrand novels. So I picked two up this time, Summer of 69 and The Hotel Nantucket, which is autographed. This is my second autographed book by her. The other one I also got from Green Valley. As of right now, Green Valley is my Hildebrand supplier. Every book that I own or have read by her has come from them. They did have a few of her other books as well, but they didn't really interest me. I think I have all the Hildebrand I wanna read for the foreseeable future. The Hotel Nantucket, I believe was released last year. Correct me if I'm wrong. It looks like this novel follows this hotel that closes after a fire killed a 19 year old maid until a billionaire buys up the hotel, Stores it and hires a maybe slightly inexperienced staff to restore its reputation. But in doing so, the ghost of this 19 year old maid won't stop haunting the hotel until her murder is acknowledged. I'm really excited to read a novel set at a hotel because I feel like that will be interesting for storytelling purposes. And then the summer of 69. Looks like we follow four siblings over their annual summer vacation to their grandma's historic house in Nantucket. Basically all of Ellen Hildebrand's books are set at Nantucket. And it looks like we follow these siblings as they navigate their own drama, intrigue, and upheaval over the summer. So this one sounds very character focused rather than plot heavy, which does slightly worry me, but all of Ellen Hildebrand's other novels, I've always fallen in love with the characters. So I think we're good. These books are screaming summer to me, maybe even like a vacation beachside read, even though I don't have any plans as of right now to go to the beach this summer, but things could change. The Perfect Family by Robin Harding, I've been wanting to read because contrary to the name, this is giving dysfunctional family vibes. Whenever I see this book, I always think of Not a Happy Family by Sherry Lapina, an iconic thriller, but this novel follows a family who's not as perfect as they might seem. And this is especially evident when their house keeps getting repeatedly pranked, causing fear within the family of not only what's happening outside the home, but also inside where everyone has their own secrets. I've read one Robin Harding so far, The Party, thought it was Man. Picked up another book by her, put it on my TBR, and now I've picked up a second book for my TBR. Maybe sometime I'll have to do an author deep dive video to figure out where I stand. I don't know, let me know if you'd like to see that. What I love about Green Valley is their prices. I got this for $4.99. That is over a third of the retail price. They don't call me the bargain hunter queen for nothing. <laughs> no one calls me that, but... People could. The Mysterious Affair at Styles by Agatha Christie. All of my Agatha Christie novels have different covers. I wish I had all of her books with matching covers. That would be such a vibe, but I think it's too late for me now. Though I love how this cover is giving like a cartoon 70-esque aesthetic. This is the first book in the Hercule Perot series. You don't need to read the series in order necessarily. They're all standalones, but they all just feature Hercule Perot as a detective. This one is set at a country estate. And when the wealthy benefactor is found poisoned, Perot is called in to investigate all the suspects who all have secrets they're desperate to keep hidden. I'm getting slightly Great Gatsby vibes, which I'm here for. Maybe in this novel, we'll get to know Hercule Perot as a character a little more to set the foundation for the other books in the series, but we'll have to wait and see. And then the last book from Green Valley is The Good Neighbors by Sarah Langan. I've never heard of this book or this author, but after I saw the cover and I read the synopsis, I was intrigued. This cover is like a perfect domestic thriller cover because we have these clouds that are dripping down and covering all of the secrets that are in the neighborhood. This novel takes place on Maple Street, a picture perfect slice of suburban life. But when the Wild family moves in, so do their weird kids. And as tensions amount in the neighborhood, a sinkhole suddenly opens up in a nearby park and the queen bee of the neighborhood's daughter falls in. So the search for Shelley begins, causing accusations against the wilds and a court of public opinion that can only end in blood. I don't know about you, but a sinkhole has never opened up in my neighborhood. Still, I think that sounds fascinating to 
read about. I feel like I'm going to really like this book. You know how sometimes you just get that feeling and you don't really know why, but I'm predicting that this will be a hidden gem. Y'all know I love my domestic thrillers. Moving on to my second and troll finds. I definitely got the most books from them. I first picked up The House We Grew Up In by Lisa Jewell. I'm not gonna lie, the egg was the deciding factor. You get to a point as a reader where all covers start to look the same. So when one interests you, or this doesn't necessarily interest me, but it does make me go, oh, that's kind of weird. I want to know more. But actually, the more I know about this book, the more I am uncertain with my purchase. Because I was reading some reviews, and it sounds like we're dealing with a family who hoards, causing their house to be like a wasteland of sorts. Like, I'm already frazzled by that. This thriller follows the Bird family. I see where we get the egg now. As the children are called back to the house they grew up in, where they have to confront what happened over Easter many years ago that tore their family apart. I especially love thrillers set over holidays, because holidays are meant to be happy, cheerful, so it's so interesting when they go haywire. I still can't decide if I like this cover. Part of me does because it's certainly unique, but on the other hand, it's kind of unsettling as well. Restore Me by Tahara Mafi. So now I have book four and book five of the Shatter Me series on my TBR. Still have not read or own books one, two, and three, and I don't know when I will pick them up, but at this rate, it's looking like maybe in a few years time. Obviously, I'm not going to read the synopsis to avoid spoilers. The Locked Door by Frida McFadden, I've heard only fantastic reviews about, on Goodreads, this has like a 4.2 star rating. To be fair, you can't really trust Goodreads ratings. I've read three star rated books, I've given a five star, and almost five star rated books, I've given two stars. It really is down to personal preference and reading taste, but I feel like it's usually more likely that a book will be a banger if the Goodreads rating is high. This thriller sounds crazy. We follow Nora, a successful surgeon with a seemingly quiet life, until one of her patients is found murdered in the same horrific manner that her father used to kill women in their basement. And even though she is not a killer, someone knows about Nora's past and is trying to pin this murder on her, but they don't have anything on her, as long as they don't look in her basement. <laughs> That's literally how the synopsis ends. Slay. This sounds so creepy and suspenseful. I first discovered this book on Goodreads not too long ago and immediately added it to my want to read list. And then while I was just browsing long Second and Charles today, I saw her and you know, fate, right? Flock by Kate Stewart. I couldn't even tell you what this book is about, even if I read the synopsis 10 times. I think this is a romance, but I'm also getting the sense that there's some fantastical elements in here as well. I heard Larry talk about this book a few times and even she was like, yeah, I can't tell you guys what this book is about and you probably won't even be able to understand the book until you get at least two-thirds into it. So you know the reading experience is not sounding great so I'm kind of apprehensive to start this but people say it's worth it. Let me know your thoughts if you've read this. I also picked up The Nesting by CJ Cook after dragging a stool around the store to reach the top shelf this was on. I will Spider-Man up the side of a bookshelf to get a book over asking for help any day. But when I do see a stool around the store I like to be civil and use one. I was actually looking for this book today because because I thought that they might have it and they did, so it was really satisfying finding it. This novel is supposedly similar to Turn of the Key by Ruth Ware, which I really enjoyed as well, because in here we follow Lexi and Nanny who has been hired to watch these two girls she immediately falls in love with, until creepy, unexplainable things start to happen around the property, and many years prior, the mother of these two girls actually unalived herself at this house, and the more time Lexi spends nannying, the more she suspects that something more sinister actually happened to the mother. I'm definitely seeing the similarities between the creepy children and the nanny. I love creepy children. I've come to realize that I love books that flip reality on its head by taking something and morphing it into the unexplainable, if that makes sense. The Stranger in the Mirror by Liv Constantine, I can't wait to read. I loved The Last Mrs. Parrish by the same author, so I do need to get my hands on the prequel sometime, but for now, this will suffice. This thriller follows two POVs, one from Addison who is about to get married but is reluctant because she is still healing from an accident that occurred many years prior, where she woke up covered in blood next to a highway with no memory of her previous life. She couldn't recall her name, how she got there, nada. And now, all these years later, she still can't shake the feeling that she did something seriously wrong. And then we also follow the POV of Julian, whose wife just unexpectedly two years ago left him and their daughter. This synopsis reminds me a lot of the movie Secret Obsession with Brenda Song, so I have a feeling that I'll be picturing her while reading this. I found out recently that Liv Constantine is actually a pen name for sisters Liv Lynn and Valerie Constantine. I thought that was kind of interesting. I did not know that. Mary Jane by Jessica Anya Bleu. I've heard that if you like Taylor Jenkins Reid, then you should read this, and that is like the easiest way to get me to buy a book. This is described as a coming of age story 
that follows this 14 year old girl who's caught between two lifestyles, one of her families she has always known, and one she never knew could be possible until she starts nannying for this family who's completely different from her own. We're having lots of nanny protagonists today. This is also set in the 70s, so I'm very excited for those vibes. I think this will have to be another summertime read. I want to be this girl. Is that too much to ask? So I have not read any Greek mythology books. I know, shocking. Book talk may have convinced everyone else to read The Song of Achilles, but I have not picked it up yet. But I thought, why not start with a spicy Greek mythology novel and dive right into the subgenre? So I picked up Neon Gods by Kate Roberts. This is a Hades and Persephone retelling that's as sinful as it is sweet, and that's all I know. Maybe I'll be a secret Greek mythology girly, so we will find out. I did love Hercules when I was younger. <laughs> Same thing, right? You can tell that I'm very knowledgeable on Greek mythology. Oh, looky here. Another Agatha Christie, Death on the Nile. This is actually the 16th novel in the Hercular Perot series, where there is another murder mystery, except this time it is set on a cruise along the Nile. I'm loving the energy already. That is kind of a short synopsis, but most of the Hercular Perot series is just a classic murder mystery with Mr. Perot as the detective. All right, my eagle eye viewers are like, Sarah, what's that other stack of books back there? Well, let me show y'all. So my library did a book giveaway a few weeks ago where they were literally just giving books away for free. They had a few boxes of books and they were just allowing people to go through them and take whatever they wanted. So I thought I'd show y'all briefly what I found. The selection wasn't great, but beggars can't be choosers. I first found False Witness by Karen Slaughter, which was a bit surprising since this is a fairly new release from her. After my last Karen Slaughter, I've not felt particularly compelled to pick up another book by her. There's just something about her writing I don't particularly jive with. So I may end up listening to this on audio, but it's always nice to have a physical copy of it as well. I also picked up these two books by Lisa Gardner. I'm not exactly sure why I picked these up. I thought I just recognized the author's name. Though the more I think about it, the more delusional I think I am. So let me know if you've read anything by her. These books look like they have been like passed around a book club getting read over and over again. So maybe they'll be really good. I like to be optimistic when going into books. You gotta set yourself up for success. I got another Agatha Christie. One would think I'm a diehard Agatha Christie stan from all these books I'm hauling from her. You know, cannot confirm or deny. I haven't read enough books from her to really have a clear opinion on her work. But if any Agatha Christie book was tailored for me, it would be this one. What is the cover giving you? The butterfly fact. You can also definitely tell that this is like an old book, like the pages are yellow. <laughs> Let's see how old this is actually. 1974, 50 years old. The Woman Outside My Window by Rachel Ryan. There's like a movie based off of this book now, right? And then isn't there like a Netflix show that is kind of making fun of this book? book slash movie. It's like called The Woman Outside My Window Across the Street or something. Um, it has like Kristen Bell in it, I believe. And then lastly, I picked up Envy by Sandra Brown. Again, this is another author I've read nothing from, but the synopsis intrigued me because it follows a publisher who receives this manuscript that compels her to meet its author. And as the story goes on, the publisher realizes there's a possible connection to her own life within the novel. I love books with bookish people in them. So a thriller with bookish people, Sounds great. All right, so here are all the books I bought these past couple of days. I always enjoy going book shopping with you guys and I hope you guys did as well. If you did, make sure to give this video a thumbs up. You can also comment, interact, subscribe, all that fun YouTube stuff, I'd really appreciate it. Let me know down in the comments any novels you've picked up recently and also if you have read any of these and your, what your thoughts were. I hope you all are having a fantastic day and I will see you in my next video, bye.